Welcome to the hobo and his girlfriend, or at least empty chair for right now. Because again, my girlfriend has a real job. She just had to go somewhere this weekend to take pictures and hopefully make a lot more money than I do. So again, one day we shall see her, or at least for WrestleMania, depending on a whole bunch of things, we'll actually hear from her. Again, thank you for joining the Hobo and His Girlfriend webcast. My name is Hobo Tom. And we're going to try and do this really on a weekly schedule. I know it's a kind of busy week for me, so I couldn't get to it on Friday. But every Friday I'm going to try and post a review of kind of the televised wrestling. So I'm going to skip a whole bunch of stuff, going to get into this. Um, first thing, Monday, we had a fairly entertaining Raw. I think the major issue I had with it is that it was a lot of promos. And I know WrestleMania is really only two weeks away, but if they're going to keep this up for two weeks, it's not going to um, to kick off. Again, Brock was announced that he's not going to be there. Major heat for Brock, which is really good. Um, the other thing is Roman came out. They just want to boo the heck out of him. <laughs> I have no idea how that's going to turn out at WrestleMania. I mean, he just gets booed and booed, even though he tried to relate to people in Detroit, saying, oh, I have to come to work. He should come to work, too. Everyone, what happens if you don't? What happens if you don't go to work? You get fired. But I don't know. It is what it is. Um, the kind of neat thing, it, it, it had that semi-shoot feeling when he went to the grill position with Vince McMahon. And it, it was entertaining. Um, then we had a little match, Banks versus DeVille. Ever since Sonya DeVille beat Princess Kimberly, I, I just find it hard to root for her. Don't get me wrong, she's a great wrestler. But as far as just trying to get behind her, it's like, eh. So we had Banks versus DeVille. The best thing about this is that this might tease a Bailey heel turn. And that, if they did it right, could be really interesting. So, so, so on the Bailey character. Let's see. Next, we had Ms. TV. And Ms. TV, I, I don't care what you say about the Ms. He's good on the mic. He can do anything on the mic. He He's the heel who makes good points on the mic. So entertaining. Blue, we got Blue Balor. It's, Blue trunks, blue jacket. I like them a little bit bitter, just in this black. It looked plain, but it had that badass look. Um, Seth Rollins came out, burn it down. Yeah, whatever. Um, I think one of the good lines was when Miz back that Balor headline bingo halls. Or VFWs. It was something along along that line from his indie days. He obviously forgot he highlighted the Tokyo Dome too. I think he did at least once. Again, please feel free to leave a comment saying, Hobo Tom, get back out there, get back on back on the street, get your cans, you don't know what you're talking about. And any comments are always greatly appreciated. And again, this this was a was a good thing. Um, Miz kind of chased everyone down. It was good. Yeah, just a lot of talking. Then there was there was a bar kerfuffle. I know that led to an event with Braun, which I'll get to in a little bit. But again, maybe this is going to be Authors of Pain call-up. That would be pretty good. You have Braun in it, Authors of Pain come in. Two big guys that makes it really believable I could beat Braun Strowman, especially if both of them team up against them. So, well, we'll see. Then you had John Cena just talk. He says he's going to have his match with The Undertaker. I really don't want to see that. I know John Cena has the healing powers of Wolverine and a wrestler's body, but if you have hip surgery, 
You're not coming back. I don't even care if you are Wolverine. Again, he calls out the Undertaker. Again, there's just a lot of tapping. A, 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 a lot of this, and not a lot of a lot of this in the match. It's just in the TV shows. It just made it feel long. Um. Then maybe John Cena he'll fill the host role just like the New Day last year. And also, don't forget for WrestleMania week, I post two videos from last year when I went to the WCBW with my girlfriend, and so we still get to see her online. And you'll see some of the highlights of I took from WrestleMania before while well, my camera died. Again, going on from there, really only the two matches. It felt like it took forever. Um, just really a bunch of pointing to the road, talking about WrestleMania. Then you have Alexa Bliss come out. I, with Asuka, a promo, it would be really fun. And if WWE could pull it off somehow, that Asuka can have both and just go from one brand to the other brand and just defend this, 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 this unified title. That would make probably the women's division a lot more interesting than, 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 having, than having the two separate bands. You combine them. And you just have the person go back and forth. And, hey, you don't have the women to do that. Again, just a really long promo. Then they had the locker room interview with Alexis and, and Mickey James and just felt something from the 90s. Like, locker room cam, really? Again, they just run down Nia, Day Nia Jax. And I could have sworn that during that... You could hear the audience in the background chant, and I is going to kill you. So it was kind of interesting. And then you had the tag team battle royal. Again, I think this is only like the third match, maybe the fourth, besides the whole scrum with the with, with T bar, 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 bar. But again, and then Braun showed up, one man wrecking crew. The, the most impressive thing, though was the way he just grabbed Carl Anderson and just tossed him like a sack of potatoes out of the ring and just like, wow. I mean, everyone says Carl Anderson's one of the best wrestlers in the business. When you see him sell to Braun, I mean, you can, under you can, un you can definitely understand why. So that was Raw kind of in a nutshell. Not much. If they're going to keep on doing this to the Rose for WrestleMania, there's going to be a bunch of people. Or say, I don't have a road there. I also have a match to get there. And, eh, whatever. It is what it is. SmackDown, however, was a lot better. My God, AJ Styles can do no wrong. I mean, he's so good on the mics. He's so good on the in the ring. AJ came out. Shinsuke came out. The crowd ate it up. Nakamura, AJ Styles. AJ Styles, Nakamura. Those two is going to be so fun to watch. Again, it's kind of a rematch from their days in New Japan, but hey, we need it. Then that led to a match versus AJ and Rusev. And again, this just this just really proves that AJ can have a good match with anyone. I mean, I didn't rate the matches from Raw because it's just like, uh, they're talking. Half the match because I had to use a bathroom, had to make dinner. My cat was craved atten attention. It's just like they're just talking. Yeah. But again, so this again, this last lasted went to AJ versus Rusev, and it it was a great match. It's a great striking match, a great wrestling match. I mean, they booked Rusev strong. AJ's AJ Styles. I mean. If they let AJ do what he could do and they let Russo do what he could do, I mean, this could be really on any minor pay-per-view. And really, it's AJ Styles. He's phenomenal. And I don't have the gloves because I can't afford them. But then you had the B, uh, Big E versus Uso. Like, the other 
members of their tag team were all incapacitated from the beatdown that they had at the hand of the Bludgeon Brothers at the at Fastlane. And the first thing I thought of this, I'm like, and again, she was my age, but this is the WWE version of the old Gangstonators. It was New Jack and Perry Saturn. Again, one gangsta and one of the Eliminators versus the Bludgeon Brothers. And Big E, good reaction from the crowd. It was a good semi squash match. I mean, the Bludgeon Brothers, for the most part, dominated. But then again, you had, had Jimmy or Jay Uso or, or one half of the Usos. Oh, here's a good one. Instead of the Gangsinators, you have New Day ish. That's. Please send me the. But I doubt it. Then you had Sami Zayn again, good on the mic. El Generico, ole, 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 ole. What, what else can you say about him? He's, he's good over, good overall. Charlotte came out. This is the woman of 1,000 robes because every time I swear they're different. In fact, a very quick story. When I took my girlfriend to see SmackDown, I looked in the car next to me, I'm like, hey, it's really a little car. Like, Wait a second, that is Charlotte. Who else would have a sparkly robe in their car and look like Charlotte besides Charlotte Flair? Then I saw AJ Styles in the car, and I'm like, hey, that guy looks like AJ Styles in the car. I'm like, wait, that is AJ Styles, because he realized they're coming out of the performer's parking space. Again... Charlotte Flair, Flair versus Asuka. <laughs> this should almost be a robe versus robe match. I almost can't wait to see the entrance for these two because it's going to be amazing. Again, great work. Can't complain about it. Orton comes out, getting ready for to be to actually have commentary. Again, mention. The Grand Slam champion. And again, this is a realistic setup for a good three a good three way match at WrestleMania because it's not talking, it's like, okay, well, I beat you, you beat him, he beat me. So so it's, it's really good. It keeps the dynamic good. Uh Rude versus Mahal. I just think the Singh brothers, even though there's one of them, because I saw the one guy take a really nasty spill and he did something to his near ankle, but it just looked bad. The Singhs are just there to get beat up, I think. <laughs> and even though they, they do help foil the match in favor of Mahal, I mean, they just get tossed around, thrown into ring posts, through tables. Through, well, they, I don't know if they've been put through a barricade yet. That's probably next, though. And end of the match doesn't really matter. RK was for everyone. Uh, K Kevin Owens did a backstage interview, and this is when Kevin Owens again goes back to being Kevin Stein. Good, just running down. I swear he's like two steps away from putting out a lot of beep this, bleep that, bleep bleep everything. Again, things you can get away on pay per view that you can't really say on TV. So that led us to a Naomi versus Carmella match. Again, Carmella is getting better and better all the time. I mean, in NXT, she was like a valet for end zone cast, and now it's like, whoa, this is like the second time I, I can say it's like, that, she's, she's doing good. Again, she still has the, she has, she, she has one of the best voices in the ring, though. I don't care what anyone says. You oh, no, you can't do that. Or what did she tell the ref? I can count to five too. I, I, it's like she means for the whole stadium to hear without the, the ring being mic'd up, which honestly is great. A lot of the wrestlers do not do that. Um, some wrestlers do it at the wrong time, but Carmella does it just right. And then you have the best Shane O'Mac promo yet. Not really a fan of his promos. Really good promo though. Um, came out, said, "Okay, I'm done. I'm gonna make this last match. 
Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. It's on WrestleMania. I'm done now. I'm going to take some time off. Then he gets the snot beaten out of him by Owens and Zayn. And, and that was a really good send-off to the show. I mean, they had so much more wrestling in SmackDown, and it was wrestling that was story-related. It had a good build-up for WrestleMania. It gives me reason to actually care about watching these wrestlers at WrestleMania. So that's good. Now the third televised TV show is going to be TNA or, or Impact or TNA Impact or wh whatever it's called. Um, this show can really be hit or miss. Thank God it's like an hour long. Sometimes it's two hours. If it's two hours, it's just like an hour's worth of wrestling and then there's commercials and then there's stuff to do things. It's Again, really happy that it's, it's a short program. If they made it long like Raw, unbearable. So again, this is a really hit or, hit or miss show. Again, a lot of promos, it seems. Um, there were some good matches, and not to go in any order, but probably the best match was, I think the last one, Kaya versus Rosemary. We'll get into that, because again, that's really interesting. Um, There was, well, that wasn't the end, but we'll talk about the end later. Again, just really a lot of build up to, to I guess their their next pay per view or really the next next TV show for them. And um, they had a Easter Fire match, which is, <laughs> which is in a long standing position, of you have something, you have this object, stuck straight up on a pole. It's just fun and interesting, and, and and it's a little bit different. It's a good kind of opening match. So so at least there's stakes. The wrestlers there. It's like, well, we're just not going to beat each other with this item. It's like this item, this briefcase, has something for me. I want that. I'm gonna punch you in the face just to get that item. So again, it was a, it was a fun match. Again, one of the best ways to do a blank on a pole match. Um, oh, the, oh, there was the one, I, I forget who it was, but the Canadian Destroyer still looks like the best move over. The one guy, the way his head hit, I want to say the ring post. I mean, either he's really good at selling, because he hit, he, it looked like he hit that thing flush, got his bell rung, Cobwebs for the rest of the match, because the way it hit, he went. I swear, he looked limp for about five seconds, and then realized, oh, I better just light on for a moment. Again, it was it was a really it was a really fun cluster match. Not nothing much more than that. Then you had this Sammy Callahan, Falahaba. Gee, Sammy Callahan just can't give some great chops. It's just that chop. Ooh. It's kind of cringe. You're like, ooh, that hurts. Again, I think a lot of what they're doing in TNA reminds me a lot of the, the 90s, thousands of WWE. Uh, Sammy Callahan tried to take the baseball bat in the chair, the Ohio versus everything or everyone. Where OVE came out, started interfering, and then, then you had a whole bunch of interference. Again, it was really fun. Somewhere in this, you had the Monster Abyss come back. And again, it's, it's, it's kind of neat to see this. Abyss is a, a, a pretty good wrestler. I think they're trying to copy it like Kane, where you had the corporate person in one hand, and on the other hand, have this this kind of really heel monster and the Jekyll and Hyde it just seems like they're trying to copy things a little bit too much again it was fun entertaining and it's, and it sets up for the monsters brawl match or, or monsters ball match whatever they call it where they use thumbtacks ladders chairs tables barbed wire 
all, again, all the fun 90s, especially the, ni the 98 ish ECW matches. Again, just, just on, in, in the right proportions. So, so some old things of EC, old things of ECW went way too far. But some of it, again, you have Rob Van Dam matches. You're just like, you can do that. I mean, the Malenko Guerrero Classics and a whole bunch of other really good matches. It did, did come through that. Then you had had the Taya versus Rosemary. And again, these two women could actually probably get on WWE one day. I mean, I think they teased like the sister Abigail. Well, it was just Bray Wyatt. It was just like going on. <laughs> But Rosemary could. Well, again, we had a birthday finish here, baby. Means nobody wins. Um, that this led to a double count out, which was really good. And probably one of the more painfully awkward looking things was when Haya kind of knelt on Rosemary boobies. Um, that just looked awkward and weird. And it looked like it probably could have just been. Awkward and hurt, but again, I was like, "Ooh, why'd you kneel there?" I kind of get it, and it like, yeah, look, a little okay, but it's like, "Ooh." And then to finish off the show, we had Austin Aries promoting his book, Roberto. Probably got that wrong. El Patron came out. Oh wait, just to go back very quickly to Tataya. And Rosemary, I do like the hint back to Lucha Underground where, where Ty is Lucha royalty. So that was kind of cool. But then getting back to Austin Aries and El Patron, again, it, it was okay. It kind of sets things up for an El Patron Austin Aries match for the title. Austin Aries, a, a vegetarian, gets kind of handed a steak by El Patron and he rejects it. There's tension. It's like, I don't need your book at all. I know what to do. But eh, it was, it was kind of good. It was, I mean, entertaining. It wasn't really anything great. It wasn't terrible. Again, TNA can be really hit or miss. What they did with the Hardys was, was the best. And in fact, that's really the only reason to watch this Monday Night Raw, because they're going to have two and a half hours of promo. That's garbage. But because they're having whatever tape match of the Hardy compound versus Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt. The broken one shall delete him and make him obsolete. Yeah. That's really the only reason to watch Monday Night Raw. I mean, they'll probably have some other stuff, but yeah, whatever. Honestly, the, the final... Not the deletion the conclusion of the Great War, or whatever they call it. Again, thank you for viewing my webcast. Please like and subscribe. And also, I kind of figured out how to put our email address online. So feel free to comment either in the sections, or please leave an email. Hey, you might get online too. Thank you for And you know what? Just to make sure, you my cat. Point to the WrestleMania side. You and she can make it to WrestleMania one day.